this tutorial on how to edit some of your Fusion 360 models. We're going to be running through how to use the timeline, how to create holes and threads, how to fillet things, and how to put a pattern onto an object. So first thing we need to understand is that we've already got some parts of our model produced in our drawing, but we're not happy with one of the parts. This middle cylinder here is too narrow. So what I want to do is to go back along the timeline, which is here, identify where I drew that middle cylinder, which is there. You can just do it with your mouse as well. Double click on the sketch or the command, and then you can go in and edit it. Here, for this particular sketch, I can double click on the dimensions for it, change it to 15, finish my sketch. Drag this back along so I can see where I'm working at. And now I want to put a hole in this section here. So the way we've done it in previous videos was to use the construct plane tool. So here, because it's a cylinder, we'd have to use the tangent plane. We couldn't use the offset plane like we did on a flat surface. So what we could do is select the surface. We can move this around to whatever angle we need it to be along that surface. At the moment, it doesn't matter. So we can say, OK, create a sketch, click on that plane and then draw our circle on here and extrude it back into the object. But we don't want to do that this time because we want to put a thread in there as well. So there is a quicker way to do it rather than extruding the hole and then going to create thread and telling it to make a thread. What we can do is to instead go to create hole and click on that component. And you can see it's automatically creating a hole there. So if we want to go and look at what's happening, we can go to there, zoom in, it's automatically centered, hopefully, zoom right in. It should be automatically centered there. And now we can tell it that we want it to be a tapped hole. We can tell it what we want the size to be. We want it to be five millimeters. We can tell it what we want the designation to be and so on, right hand. And that's what we wanted here. We want a hole going from one side to the other. So all, there you go, all the way through. And in fact, no, we don't. We want it to go a specific distance. We want that to go, if we know it's 15 millimeters, we want it to actually go about 12. So let's tell you we want it to go 12 mil. Okay, now what we should have is a hole inside this. As you can see, there's a thread in there. It's a hole that goes all the way in to 12 millimeters. And the reason we want that is this component is going to have a hole going all the way through from top to bottom so we can slide another component in. And that's just a steel bar. We're going to use a grub screw to come in for a transverse hole and then hold the whole component at a specific point on the steel rod. So now we want to do that. We need to go to construct plane offset plane onto there, okay, sketch, put a hole in there as we were talking about earlier, we want that to be for five mil, yep, finish sketch, extrude all the way through. So now we've got a hole going all the way through, a threaded section there so that our grub screw can go in and if we needed to we can always go back in and adjust that hole so that it comes further back if we need to. As you can see from the hidden details, the grub screw can go in, this steel part can pass through this rod, and the grub screw will hold it in place. So now all we need to do is to look at how we're going to put some grips around the outside of this object, because at the moment it's too flat. So what we want to do is to put a pattern around the outside. So we use the same plane we just created, which should be this one. No, here we go. Oh, escape this, that's why. So that's that plane there. We want to draw one component or one part onto there and then use the pattern tool to put it all the way around the outside. So we're going to do that. Sketch, zoom in, draw a one millimeter cylinder, finish sketch. Then we will extrude it. Let's just. 
goes down. So we know this is 20 millimeters long, this section here. So 20, that's taking it up, so minus. Now it's trying to cut it, but we actually want to join it to that face. We want it to be part of the object. So let's just move this over so you can see what we're looking at. And we say, OK. So now we've got one of those. We could go in and draw them all out over and over again, which would be laborious. Instead, we can go to Create Pattern Circular Pattern. Click on that face. Select the axis being this face. And then increase the number to 15. So you can go up one at a time, or you can just type it in. Now we've got 15 of them. We say, OK, done. So we've done that around there. We can do the same along the bottom if we want. Now, if we don't want this to be a sharp edge, if we don't want this to be a perpendicular edge, if we want it to just round it off slightly, we can always use the fillet tool. So under here, you've got lots of different tools you can use. If you look at the fillet tool, it rounds an edge, it fillets the edge. So I'm just going to click on that edge there and say I want that to be 0.25 millimeters. And as you can see, what I've now got is a rounded edge so that when I'm trying to slide that metal bar in, it's not going to catch on the sharp edge there. So I can always go back and do the bottom as well. So if I just rotate the whole model, I can go in and fill it there. If I push F, as you can see from here, F is the shortcut key. Click on there. If I want to do more than one face at a time, I can add in extra faces and so on. But I'm just going to do this one. So 0 0.25 and done. And then obviously I'd need to go in and put a pattern on there. But those are the timeline, holes, threads, fillets, and pattern tools that you can use to start editing the basic shapes of your model.